I'll say that um, it was actually a pretty good month, uh, considering, well, I guess we did. No, that was in March. I was going to say we had a little bit of rain, but that was in the beginning of March. Uh, in any case, it was a short month. The, uh, the way it turned out is uh, total reported traffic collisions in the area of Bible Dolce, which includes the freeway adjacent, uh, was 27. Um, and out of those 27, there were only 11 that were reported to have any injuries. I reviewed, um, just about all those, and um, the most severe injury was only contusions to someone's face, so very minor in nature. <coughs> um, only one was reported, at least on this report, was reported as a, as a DUI uh, primary collision factor. However, it doesn't count because it really wasn't in this area that this is actually related to a pursuit that we were involved in and ended out in the city of Santa Clarita. So, basically no DUI traffic collisions uh, this month. Yes, Mr. Grant. Did they uh, classify that one that flipped over in front of the house? Did they go ahead and classify that as a hit and run? Uh, no, I think there were some findings to that and uh, follow the, after follow up they determined that uh, there may have been another party. There were no hit and runs. Um, they were, and like I said, they, the injuries were relatively minor. There was a couple of rolls. Yeah, there was a cast on a double yellow line, ran her off the road from what I understood, and she flipped her in the <coughs> Still missed nothing else. Uh, right. Still missed everything. And it could be subsequent to the statements obtained or any witness statements that may not have been determined to be the fault of the collision. Mm -hmm. As oftentimes are, um, a lot of the, uh, maybe the uh, out of control or rollover collisions. <laughs> out in these roads over here pertain more to the speeds in the, the roadway than they do to uh, other drivers. Um, let's see. Ah, arrests actually was relatively quiet too, so no DUI traffic collisions, but uh, DUI's arrests in general were also kind of low, um, which means that maybe you know things are going good over here. So there's only three for the month. Um, and then there was one other misdemeanor arrest for a uh, speed contest, which was kind of out of the area too, which is down in Soledad, closer to Sand Canyon. So it was pretty close <coughs> for, uh, at least for the highway patrol, with that, uh, in, uh, the uh, citation statistics. I got a report last month, just after uh, showing up here for February's uh, uh, town council meeting. And which really only carried us over through January, but in Jan <coughs> up to January, or in January, for our area, uh, there were, let's see, 87 DUI arrests. There were 3,042 citations issued for speed. Uh, there were 112 seatbelt violations, 23 uh, child restraint violations, uh, 133 cell phone violations and 43 texting violations that were all cited for January that is. And right now we have Los Angeles County Sheriff Resident Deputy Scott Schor. Good evening everybody. Good evening. Since my boss is here I gotta be on my best behavior. Uh, <laughs> I know she's on the list here. Today. That's what we call for Kenneth's luck, huh? Oh that's <laughs> Well, I hope everybody's doing well. Hope they, uh, you all survived the, uh, the little downpour we had. <laughs> so I didn't, I cruised around, I didn't see a lot of damage here. It's just a couple of along solid ads, so we did pretty good as opposed to Lake Hughes, which did not go pretty good. So, uh, yeah, I spent uh, 16 hours up there with evacuation, so they were having a hard time. After, after the fire, we did the same during the station fire, so it's common, but I'm glad that worked out. Uh, just on the stats, uh, last month I know I, we had uh, January 8th, and I won't go through that, I'll just tell you we had 8th, but we did go up in uh, February to 12th, and we had uh, one burglary of a residence, one boat burglary, so over on Lake Echo Hills Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we had a something it was actually I took that report, so guy had his boat in storage and he had a tarp over it and unfortunately he hadn't checked it in a year. Went back and found stuff missing when he went to go move it. So okay. 
I advise people if you have stuff stored, please check it regularly because stuff does walk away. And after a year of being out in the weather, we, the surfaces of the boat, we couldn't get anything out of it. But they stole parts off his motor, he was trying to restore it, and I felt bad for him. But yeah, I would just recommend that you check this, your stuff. Uh, let's see, we had one non-aggravated assault, non-criminal, one non-criminal, one uh, fortunately person dead, which we, as I've explained, we go to those calls and we have to write a report if it's something that homicide needs to come and take a look at, or if it's, we can't get a doctor to sign, and it becomes a coroner's case, so we stay there until they come and pick up the remains. Uh, let's see, three vehicles repossessed. Which contributed to the rise of because we usually we haven't had any out here in a while, but we do pull a tag number for the report number and uh, one impounded. So that's uh, except for the you know, we still have a problem with our burglaries. In fact, I wanted to bring up I uh, I think I covered the guy arrested for the water tank I found yeah. out yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. I went and dug up and tried to find who the property owner was who wasn't interested in following through. And you know what that does to our case? We have no victim. And this guy was good for it. And I've been after him for quite a while to try to get something done. So, you know, I'm just telling everybody, if you get something stolen, we're here to help you. We take the report, we want to follow it, we want to catch these guys. So, unfortunately, if you say, hey, I'm not interested, there's nothing we can do. And then he will go out and do it to somebody else, and somebody else, and somebody else, because these guys who are stealing scrap aren't going to stop at one big 10,000-gallon water tank on their trailer. Yeah. When you're going down the canyon road and he's got the pipe still sticking out, it kind of draws my attention. So. Uh, we also had an unfortunate incident out over here last week, I tell everybody off of at the gas station on Pepper Tree. A uh, woman pulled in, three o'clock in the morning, going to school or work, went to check the air in her tires. Gentleman hanging around out there came and approached her, and he made like his car needed help, and he ended up touching her. And she we did make a report, we got some video from the store, because there is store video. It's not very clear, but we're checking all the known suspects. I've been working with detectives to try to figure out if we know who this guy is. But just watch yourself. Three o'clock in the morning, these places are dark. And especially, not to fault any business, but Pepper Tree, you've got a recycling place. There are guys that wait there for an open, or to see what they can steal from the recycling place. So if you're there by yourself, it's not it's not a safe place. I recommended, you know, it's too late now because I mean she was understandably upset and panicked. But I told her if there's a problem, there's a fire station right down the road. Pull in that fire station and lay on your horn. Because you know what? There are four burly guys who will come out because it actually happened two days before a similar incident, but a different guy. This was a resident who was followed from Granada Hills by somebody who struck up a conversation with her at a gas station. And she went to the fire station and laid on a horn, and they came out, and the guy <laughs> took off. Fortunately, we don't have a license plate. And we haven't had this in the whole yeah. time I've been here, but. Good safety. It's yeah. a good safety thing. Yeah. Yes. This is Palmdale Station Captain, uh, Captain Don Ford, who wants to uh, introduce himself and Great. say a few words. Awesome. Yeah, just a few words. Um, I, I, I think this is about the last town council I haven't been to. I don't think I've been to Green Valley yet. So. Um, the only reason I'm here is so you can all see who I am. And I do know there's a difference between active and active. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I, I can appreciate that. And I also know that uh, um, this community, although you're, you're very, very active, um, you have one of the better town councils. We have seen them. You and, and your partner right next door, Nathan, are 
actually focused on community issues. And I don't know if, you, if you've gone and visited some of the other town councils um, that are further north, they're a lot more disorganized and a lot less professional than you are. So I really appreciate the, the feedback you give to Scott and through him to me is invaluable. Um, hopefully, we, I, mean, I know we lost Bob Hines, who was a great backup to him yeah. to promotion, but uh, we'll try and get you somebody else out here regularly too to have a backup Scott. And uh, if you have anybody in mind who works out well here, you let Scott know he'll get it to me to okay. try and get you guys what you need down here. Great. Um, as always, you know you're, you're short on cars. That's just the way, you know, we've got what we've got and we'll send you wherever we can. But if you have any special needs, if, uh, if Scott can't handle it, feel free to contact me directly and uh, I'll do what I can for you. Can I have Scott's night number so I can call him in the middle of the night? <laughs> <laughs> it took, yeah, it took me over a half an hour to have somebody come <laughs> sign up. That's, that's my job to wake him up in the middle of the night. <laughs> well, then I'll take your phone number. <laughs> you do their job to wake me up in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> I have 250,000 people, 247 employees, and 900 square miles on where you're about. So, yeah, I and, and, and I realize that each part of this is very different. And I, I was listening to you earlier talking about the stuff that community standards is something that all town councils are, are concerned about. And I would just tell you all, just as a word of advice, beware. Um, all the rules, you can build away legal protections, but my experience has been that when the developer comes in, uh, you've got to get on whatever their project is very early because they'll get a bunch of approved to get a ball rolling to the point where and they'll get a, uh, somebody a weave or something. Right now you've got Super Thomas who's very friendly towards the rural areas. You know he turns out uh, 2016 I believe he's gone. Uh, and if I were you all I'd be looking at who you want replacement um, because it's going to make a real difference in this whole area. This, yeah. this whole valley went up here all the way to the Animal Valley as well. Who the new Super Rugby is this year. And I'm not going to get political and suggest anybody. I'm just telling you guys, you know what you need in your community and what your concerns are. Pay attention early on to who's throwing their hat in the ring for that race and use your whatever influence you can for that because it's going to make a huge difference in this community. Yeah. Who gets elected to supervise you? Uh, I don't get to vote on community standard district. I don't get to vote on any of the. I actually live in Lancaster, so I can vote in their elections. I can't vote in ours. Right. And I'm going to decide what's changed as far as the zoning laws are. Some of that stuff is critical to us too, because when they start building stuff out in the middle of nowhere, we said we're a long ways away from some of that, and it creates policing problems for us as well. Yeah. They, they do give us notice, but by the time we get those environmental impact kind of studies to, to do, it's so far down the process that um, it's kind of hard to stop things. That's, that's good advice. Hmm? That's good advice. Yeah, you know, watch the election, watch you. What you what you need to do too is, is there, there's a any, anytime they're doing some of these things, these projects, there's usually public notice requirements. What you should know for yourself right now is what papers the county planning to routinely have these things published in. There are certain ones that they pick, and I don't know what they are for this area. You know, they probably like the signal from Santa Maria, or you know, it could be some some local um, uh, paper. They have to publish public notice. You, you need to know where all those public notices are published. It'll just be in final print on page 13 of the classified ads. It'll be in columns as public notices. And you, you should be watching those on a daily basis, whatever papers support this community. Because that's a good way to get advanced notes when you see something like, I wonder what that is. And sometimes you have to go somewhere to actually get the documents and just get one paragraph thing so you could be a, a hearing or consider some kind of change or something. Yeah. So that's something you guys want to look at. As far as the police stuff, if there's anything that you, you get any questions you guys ask me or think about how we can do this, what we're doing. No, I think Scott, Scott he's, he's he's pretty much up to speed. Yeah. I know Jeff Ack, and his new, uh, his new partner, is it Hoke? Oh, uh, Hotek. Hotek. Yeah. Hotek. Uh, Hotek. Stopped by the ranch, and I had one of my neighbors down there and his son with his off-road vehicle. So I kind of cycled him down, and he presented a really thorough presentation to this young man. All right, about what are the what are the laws and regulations, and he offered, and I, I want to bring it up to to you three, that there are new laws that came into effect in January, to my understanding, and I think it would make for a good little segment of a council meeting to have 
an update, especially dealing with off-road. I think you'd get turned out with, with your help with off-road because we get a lot of these off-road situations. So if we could have something that is. Yeah, you, you can just in, invite the sergeant. Uh, I'll just explain what I know about this. Um, we have the, all of our off-road enforcement is basically paid for through a grant from the state that we get through planning parks and all this stuff. Uh, they are building, in the process of building a new off-road vehicle park up towards the rock. Um, it's probably going to be put in place, I don't know this exact, it's 160 acres or something. It's not a huge piece of property, it's big, big enough to ride in. It will probably be a few years before that's, you know, and right now it's just in the planning phases. Um, but that will happen out there, I'm sure. Um, Sergeant Acton works right now for the Car Cops Bureau. He doesn't work directly for the Congress Station. But I've known Jeff for years and years and years. And he was a training officer for me at Lancaster for years ago. I recently turned over control of the grant to him from uh, my traffic sergeant. It was a um, planning discussion in two years went by. My traffic sergeant is higher now. Somebody's going to be around a while longer. We'll have to do this. So he'll be doing he all the offer enforcement. Um, we basically go based on complaints. So if you've got off road problems, get a hold of Scott, or you can you know, start to have to contact the station, send it straight to him, or you can call Pago Station, give it to Sergeant Mark Johnson, and he will get the information on the off road team. Uh, it's usually done on overtime. Some of them build it. Uh, Deputy Hutak actually works out of the Lancaster Station. It's a joint operation, so we cover the whole mountain. His presentation was just so he, he he's worked out off road team for several years. Yeah. And he, he rides motorcycles, you know. Most of those guys do. They they actually are riders. Uh, yeah, that's why they like to be on the team, because then they get to ride on duty. <laughs> they um, but they're very good about directing people towards the, the right ways and going to the areas where it's permitted, make sure you've got the spark arresters and well they see on the road trails and things and scare horses. Keep going. Um, so we have some augmented staffing. I have a, just a very short report. Augmented staffing, some extra firefighters on engines. We have a patrol strike team. So that's a, a group of five. Strike teams, five engines. This is a patrol team, so it's a group of uh, patrols that will be out looking at the areas. And uh, of course, it's calm tonight, but we expect a little bit more through the weekend. I mean, through the through Thursday and Friday. Today's Wednesday, right? Yep. Thank you. Thursday and Friday. And I don't know about our staffing. I don't know. We'll augment staffing, but we'll see what, what they decide on that tomorrow. So, you know, I don't, I, I don't need to preach it here anymore. But you know, ready, set, go. Is everybody ready? Study the be test. I always say that. Okay. So for uh, our responses for February, um, no structure fires, no local property fires. Mm, okay. So I'm just looking at this for the first time. No special outside fires, and looks like really the only thing on here for this month, uh, 15 emergency calls, three good intent calls, one false alarm, and one no specified incident, count a tree type thing. For a total responses uh, from your local station, 20, 20 responses. And um, I think that's literally all I have for you. What's good intent? <laughs> Oh, like a cat in a tree. Oh, yeah. Or, or we, we see smoke and it's someone's on a dirt bike creating smoke. It's not our problem, it's theirs. Is there any cert classes coming up? You know, um, I would be happy to do a cert class for you out here. I kind of look to Gary to, to reach out for exactly. those. Uh, we have a little bit of a hard time getting the support we need to do a cert class, logistically. So if, uh, if somebody wants to kind of take the lead in that, uh, we'd be, we would be more than happy. It's been How a while. How many people do you need to make it work well? We'll do as little as 10 and as many as 50 or 60. Yeah, Typically we have about, you know, I do do cert classes through my whole division. And uh, we are very active with that. And I have not done one here for, for quite a while. So. How many cert levels are there? Is there just the initial one? I, I understand there's more than one. You just keep going. You take the refreshers, um, especially out here. <laughs> kind well, kind there's a, there is a between Agu Dulce and Acton. There is a, a formal team. Gary's on that committee, and so it, it really is just up to you how involved you want to get in that structure, um, and if you want to work closely with the sheriffs, and if you want to be on the committee that uh, one of our captains runs. Um, there's all kinds of refreshers you can take. 
be on the list, you know, get called out for an emergency. So it really is, I don't know that it's search 101, 102, or anything like that, but but we do do the refreshers at uh, the uh, Del Valle Training Center and um, throughout the county. But if you would like a class, get with Gary, and, and if you could get him or somebody else to take the lead logistically, we'd love to bring it in. Great. Uh, for the accolades. CSD revision was approved by the Board of Supervisors in March 4th. Again, give them last minute changes in. CSD committee, our, the CSD committee that, that worked on it, and really every town council from the time we got started on it was, was supportive of it and um, did everything they could to get the community's goal moved forward. So it, a, a, it was a real group effort to get it going. So. It took about 12 years? I think, I think it was originally started in 1998. I think Donna Softly started in 1998. And um, then they had given it to the town council to kind of sat dormant there for a while. And then um, back in 2005, uh, we said, let's finish this off. And from 2005 to 2014. So only 16 years, so we didn't want to rush into it. Well, I will have to say, if there's been a document that has been vetted, yeah. this has been vetted. Now we need to help them come out and tell us what the value is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Well, thank, you. thank you again. I appreciate you. That's awesome. That's, that's one of the things that one of the best things to protect our lifestyle. You're yeah. absolutely right. You know, we, are and absolutely we didn't have much before. We didn't have much but before. We got a little bit. But, um, now so we've got. Our kids will benefit. You guys have done a great thing. No more than three weeks. I'll have a, I'll have a uh, local site up for, for the ranch, and I'm gonna get with uh, Juan and and uh, Flip, uh, William, William. and anybody that has property that wants to wants to tag on to that site. They're more than
it's in the zone. I think the zone comes up to 1.1 mile past gap before. You can you can go in it, but it's a, it's a very good sales factor that you want to deal with. But I would recommend if you are doing it on a personal basis because you need to have a site rep and they get paid. And the site rep is there for your representation. That's so that, you know, they're there the whole time filming. And I'll, I, I, I'm familiar, I work with the studio. Okay, well then you, then yeah. you know, you know, you know the prices, and yeah. you know, you know, even though we love the college students, it's no, kind of rough. <laughs> you know, they come with $500 and the crew is 36, you know, and you don't want to manage them. At one time they tried to get that zoning to start from where the studios, like Santa Cruz Studios, a 35 mile zone, and I, that's been years. But, uh, well, that's why we're addressing this because the new Disney Studios and Santa Maria Studios, right. and you know, the antiquated zone was made in 1926 when they were looking, the cars could only make a 16 right. mile, you right. know, uh, not, and, and they were actually. Virgin land that you could record that you could go inside the zone. But now so much of that filming area is, you know, even though the studios want to come out and they do a variance on it, but it makes it much more simple to them if you're inside that film zone because it wasn't too big of a deal until Google came along and then you've got every extra in the book. You know, as soon as he gets booked on a show, he immediately goes down and sees if it's inside the zone and he waits until after the filming day and then he comes up and he wants to yeah. have, have his own break. Yeah. Right. So it's it's something that we're addressing and it's something that our whole committee is going to be active on. Good. Okay. Okay. The state of California won't give them a tax break. They don't realize that if they gave them the tax break and they worked here that all the people that worked yeah pay taxes and the businesses that they utilize pay taxes. So they're only shooting films that are a lower budget and I think it's under, I don't know, do you know what it is? It's like $75,000 yeah. or nothing. So it's basically low budget TV, not even high budget TV is filming here anymore. So that's, you know, when you guys nice. give up your property, you're not that's getting nice. as much money as you would. Yeah. And they that's destroy true. the property too. Why did they need a tax break? Well, well, they don't realize what it costs to make money and what, you know, yeah, we have a lot of our actors are big budget, major ones. See, the principals, the principals, they get, they get their per diem. They, yeah. they go and leave. It's, right. it's the local people. Right. They're and, not, they're and, not and, looking and at it. You know, we're yeah. local. Yeah. When we go out of town, we, we like it because we get a per diem. Yeah. But yeah. I'm saying there's a lot of people going out of businesses in California. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because there's because with the metal fabricator, the glass guy, the plant guy, the this it? guy, all the people that support these businesses that pay taxes to the state of California. They're leaving. They're going to Texas and they're going to New Orleans. And I know a lot of people that we've really done business with for the last 30 years that are gone. They're yeah, just gone. We, 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 we do metal fabricating for our equipment. We do. They're gone. We can't find yeah. these guys anymore. Yeah. And, and it's all because the state of Cal and there is people arguing with it, trying to get it back. I don't know why he's doing this, the, the governor. I don't know why they're doing it. But, you know, when you go to certain countries and certain states, you're not allowed to bring your guys. So it's putting all these guys out of work. You have to utilize, they give you the tax break, yeah. but you have to utilize their guys. Yeah. 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 London yeah. is the worst. Some of the Australia states, was the worst. States, the way they work it, like I know New York and not Louisiana, which is one of their biggest right now. Um, you, you can bring your people, but and when you bring one, you have to use one of theirs. Yeah. That's the way they work it. Mm. You know, if you have to mm. bring an electrician from here, then you've got to replace it. Actually, you have to, re, you know, not replace it, but have one of their people work as well. well that way, we, they don't want us bringing all of our people there and their people not working. A lot of the, a lot of the time, the counties, uh, in talking with Pauline, everybody's trying to get some awareness going of really what the plight is because. It's it's like you can close Hollywood stores. Oh yeah. That's how bad it is. It, it